Hey guys, so uh, here I am again doing another update video. Since the last time I made a video, I've done a few things. Um, I will like to mention that Sergio and I went to volunteer at um, an orphanage here. And it was a pretty cool experience. It was one of those little like programs that... Um, like for soldiers to get volunteer hours kind of thing so um, I just asked if I can come along and he asked and they said yeah it was okay so I just went along for the experience and it was interesting it wasn't too bad of a drive it was like 20 minutes driving there you know I was a little anxious nervous and to be honest when I thought of an orphanage you know I, I thought of something kinda like dark and maybe a little scary or just dirty or I don't know like sad you know but I got there and it was totally different it was it looked nice it was like it was colorful there was paintings on the walls they had the little colorful like um like the puzzle pieces on the floor not the hard kind though it's kind of like I guess styro not styrofoam I don't know if it is but you know that that soft material it just it looked like a daycare it had a bunch of toys and everything and it was kind of happy I mean, you know, and I didn't, like, for a moment, I kind of just forgot, you know, it was an orphanage, and I, I really did think it was a daycare, I guess, you know, that kind of was just, like, in my head, and then, um, later on, there was the infants downstairs, and then the, like, the toddlers, like, uh, preschool kind of age or something, I don't know if they're in school, I don't know the ages that they go to, they are, but, um, the older ones they were um, upstairs and so I mean technically not really upstairs because you kind of had to go upstairs to get to the place so on the floor level that you were on was the toddlers and then downstairs were the little kids but anyways so first we went to the where the little kids were you had to go and you know you took off your shoes you had to wash your hands you know it makes sense and then we went and we played with the little babies first and it was so funny because Sergio sat down right next to a little, like a slide that they had. And um, he just sat down there. And then one of the little girls just comes up to him and just sits on his lap. You know, like he was sitting crisscross applesauce. And she just like, whoop, props right on his little legs. And he just like lays there. Or she lays there, sorry. She's just like sitting on his lap and like she looks up at him and like she's kind of playing and like laughing and giggling. It was just really cute. And so I was just like looking around, trying to see, I didn't know how to approach them. I don't know, I didn't know if they were like going to cry on me or, because there were a few that were crying like right, right when we got there. So I didn't know how it was going to happen. So I was planning on just sitting down and waiting for one to come up to me too. But that wasn't really happening. So I was like, okay, well, let me just get a baby. And so there's this little, little baby. He was just crawling, like he, can't, he couldn't even walk yet. The one that sat on Sergio's lap could walk. And he couldn't walk, he was just crawling, and he was looking at me. And I was like, okay. He was like the calmest of all of them. And um, so I was like, okay, let me get this one. So then I picked him up, and I walked with him around a little. They had a like a fish tank along the wall. So I was like showing him the fishes. I mean, he's probably seen them because, you know, he's there. But I was just showing him, and uh, it was so cute. Like, he would just look at me with his little eyes. And his big old head and it was just cute and um but then I, at one point like while I was holding him he was just looking at me and I was looking at him and I kind of like thought about it and I was like wait a minute you know like their parents aren't gonna just come pick them up like this isn't daycare you know like they don't have anywhere else to go kind of thing and then it was that moment that I was just like thinking about it I was like oh my gosh like I started getting sad and then I looked at Sergio and he saw that I was like tearing up <laughs> and he was like are you okay and I was like I don't know I'm getting sad and I think I mean I had a feeling it would be sad but I didn't think it would really get to me I guess because I'm not a parent yet I don't know because I spoke to several other like moms and um I told him about it, you know, because I was looking forward to it. I, I knew about this like a month in advance or something. And a lot of them were like, oh, no, I can't do that. You know, like, I'm a mom. 
I can't do that. I guess because they put themselves in that position, like, you know. And so I was like, oh, okay. And in my head, I was like, so I'm not a mom, so it shouldn't be too bad for me, you know. Not that I'm heartless, obviously, but I just didn't think that it would get to me that much. But it did. Like, I started tearing up. I didn't, like, full-blown cry, cry, but I, like, slapped myself out of it. But, um, it was interesting after that. I was like, okay, you know, calm down. Let me just make the best of it, what I can. Enjoy these kids, you know, make them laugh for a little bit and stuff. So, um, then after we were with the kids for a while, we ended up going to the upstairs where the other, the older kids were. And, um, we were playing with them. And that one was funny because... Sergio really like hit it off with the kids. I put up some pictures on Facebook and Instagram. And um, it was funny because they had like those little, the playhouses. And Sergio just like went in it. And he took a few like puzzle pieces that were just laying around. It, w it wasn't really puzzle pieces. They were like kind of blocks. But they weren't blocks. They were like, they looked like puzzle pieces because they were thin. But like the corners interlocked like a puzzle but it was hard like a block i don't know point is he took some of those and he was like trying to build something and it was so funny because there was this little girl that was heading into the little house and um these kids don't speak english but i kind of like signaled to her like she had this toy truck that it, it was big and it had like a back part like a construction kind of toy truck and the back part had like a big old thing like you know where you put dirt or whatever in real life but here she had a bunch of the the blocks like i guess she had been going around and like getting them so she had a ton of them and i kind of like signaled to her since you know i couldn't speak to her like can i have one you know like can i see one because i wanted to play with them too like with her and then she looks at me and she goes mm, like no you know and i was like oh i kind of like got a little sad and then a minute later, or two minutes, I don't know, I, I asked her again. I was like, you know, can I have one? And she did it again. She said, mm, like a little um, a face. And she said, mm. And I was like, okay, okay. I got kind of sad. But I was like, okay, like, I don't want to make her cry or anything. I'm just like, take it. So I let her be. Then when she gets, because this was like right outside the house. Then when she walks into the house where Sergio is with his little blocks building, she sits down right in front of him. And she kind of looks at him. And then she notices, like, you know, he's building something. And then she just shares all of her blocks with him. Like, she's just handing them to him so he can, like, use it to build something bigger. And I was like, what? Like, I just asked to use these blocks, and now she doesn't want to share with me, but she will share with him. And then after I saw that she did that, I asked her again, you know, like, uh, can I, can I see one? You know, can I see them? And she still said no to me. She still said no. She didn't share with me. But she shared with Sergio. And I was like, how is this? How is this possible? So I was like, okay, whatever. He got to build something cool. And like she was smiling. And like she was amazed by it. Because he kind of built this big thing. Kind of looked like a satellite or something. I don't know. Sergio. He's weird. So um, he built that. And then she loved it. And then um, she was still kind of just grumpy to me. But she was so nice to Sergio. And then after that, there was another kid um, who was hanging, like, in the window, kind of like... Like, the playhouse had little windows that you can open. And he was kind of, like, hanging half his body out, half in. Like, his arms and his kind of, like, upper body was out. And then his legs were in the house kind of thing. I hope you can imagine that. I don't know. And so he was just doing that. And it was funny because there was two windows side by side. And then Sergio gets in the other window. But, you know, he's he's big, so it, it looked funny because the house is made for little kids, not adults. So he gets in the, the, the window next to him, and he starts hanging out of the window just like him. And then they're just, like, looking at each other and laughing. And it was so cute. I got, like, the cutest pictures of him just, like, hanging out of the, the window with the kid. It was adorable. But, uh, what else? Then that kid started, like, jumping out. And then, like, flipping, like, not, like, all cool or anything, but half his body was out, so he would just, like, 
flip out and fall on the ground. <laughs> and then he'd walk around and go all around inside and then do it again and again and again. And then at some point, like, Sergio started, like, helping him out. And it was cool. And he was in there the whole time, Sergio. He was just in there. And it was funny because one of his higher-ups that were there, I don't remember what rank he was, but uh, one of the higher-ups was, like, he told me that I need to buy one of those for our house so that he can play in because Sergio did not leave that place. And it was just really cute. But it was a fun experience. It was only a few hours. But it was a good Sunday. It was my first time doing that. And it, it was nice. I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was cool. And then after that we came home. And uh, what else have I done? School started. I'm um, taking three classes. Oh, there was this big dilemma because a lot of the books, I buy my books on Amazon. And I'm only taking, well, I'm taking three classes this semester. But only two of them required a textbook. One of them was just like additional articles and reading stuff. And the professor provided that, which is really nice because that was the first time I've ever had that happen. So, um, sorry, I looked down as my phone. But, um, so I ordered my books, like as soon as the syllabus was available on Canvas, which Canvas is the, like the, the thing that we use in my school. Or I think that's a lot of schools, not just mine, but point is, um, as soon as the syllabus was available, saying the book, I ordered it. And I was checking that all the time. And I mean, technically I am ahead of the time. So like, let's say it was available at like 12 AM kind of thing. And no one wants to stay up till midnight just to check a syllabus, you know, and they can check the next day. I was able to check cause it's only 2 PM over here. So anyways, I was on top of that. I was always checking and I ordered my books ASAP, but Amazon, sometimes, you know, some of the sellers don't ship internationally. So it's such a hassle because what happens is Sergio had to get this thing that he has to pay for. And it's um like this company that you tell them, you put in your information like where you live, like uh, South Korea, and they generate this address for you, like a totally random address. Um, and ours just so happens to be in Sarasota, Florida, which we're from Florida, but um, like the person who told us about it, he's from, I believe Texas, and his address was like in Wisconsin or or Colorado, something random. So it, it doesn't always happen that it's in the same state from where you're from, you know. And I don't think anyone lives in that address. I don't know how they generate the address, but point is, they give you an address so that you can ship things to that address. And since they have your information in the system, they automatically forward that package to you overseas, wherever you are in the world. So I had to do that. But if you think about it, that's like double the shipping time, you know, because I have to wait for Amazon to ship it to the U.S., then the U.S. to ship it to me. So I was like freaking out because I had my first quizzes already, like my first exams and all my classes. And I was worried that my, my, my book wasn't going to be here. And, you know, they have reading material on the class, on the, uh, for the test. Um, and I was like, oh, Lord, I don't have my textbook. And I wanted my textbook. You know, I kind of freak out because I wanted a textbook. Um, so I sent out like this mass email to all my class members or classmates. And I told them my situation, kind of like really brief, like I didn't tell them everything. But I told them, you know, I'm overseas and my uh, shipping was like a hassle. And I don't think my books will be here in time. And I asked if anybody could possibly scan the textbook pages for me and send it to me like email um whatever and so i got a lot of replies they were nice and they did and i was worried that they weren't going to because it was like four chapters five chapters that i needed and i was thinking like who's gonna want to do that for me you know like a stranger that they don't know um and i kind of made i made the conversation so that like a group message so everybody could see it and i pointed out like to try and help myself like um hey you know if i can just get like four or five people to do it you know each of you only has to do one chapter so you don't have like a big burden to do a bunch of it so i did that and uh but a lot of people were just like 
offering like, hey, you know, I can do it tomorrow, but I can do this chapter and this chapter and like multiple chapters. I was like, wow, you know, like I have faith in humanity still. <laughs> it was it was really good. I actually got a lot. Like I kind of had to tell people, oh, never mind, I got it already. I felt bad, but you know, because I literally sent it to everyone in my class, and you know, college classes have a lot of people. So probably like a hundred plus. Yeah, a hundred plus for sure, for sure. Yeah, the lowest is like 105, and I send it to 105 people. Just not the instructors. Those are the only people I didn't send it to. But so, yeah, that was that hassle. One of my books came in after the test, but oh, I know my people. My people. My classmates had already sent it to me. And then one of them still hasn't even came yet. Um, so I'm still waiting on that. But, you know, my test ended for now. Um... Uh, today I took my babies, the cats, to the vet clinic on post for the first time. I'm like a horrible mom. We've had our cats for, I think, four months. Feels like forever though. I feel like I've had them forever. But we've only had them for about four months and I still never had taken them to the vet or anything like that to get like their vaccinations or you know the standard stuff so I finally did that because uh, we might want to take them to the states when we get like this summer when we go visit we just have to see you know money wise how much it is and, well I mean I know how much it is but I, we're trying to save up for that first to see if not we'll have to get a cat sitter but it would be cool if we could take them to the states and so we wanted to get that um, taken care of so, you know, they got their standard, like, the rabies shot. They got tested for leukemia. Um, I, I didn't know cats can get that. I didn't know they can get AIDS, either. Cats can get AIDS. Yeah, that's weird. I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, they can get a lot of stuff, but, uh, what else? Um, they got this other feline something. Shot. I don't remember. Two shots. And then the microchip, um, which they need in order to go in and out of the country. Like, to go out of the country to the U.S., you don't need it. But in order to return back into Korea, you need to have the microchip. So they got that done super fast. They got cute little things for their collars, you know, the number to match the microchip kind of thing. So we added it to their collar, which we just got their collar, so it was cute. They have a little bell now, the little house for their, it's a picture of a house kind of thing. For their rabies, no, for their microchip number. And then they have another little one that they got today for their rabies shot. Um, so it was cute. They did really good. Oh, they had to get like a, uh, their temperature taken with like a rectal thermometer kind of thing. Poor cats, they did not like that. But, um, it was cute. They did okay. They did good. Soju, being a troublemaker as usual, was like, trying to get behind all the little desks and like hiding and he was just all curious and kimchi was just like sniffing all over and stuff but um it was a good day then i had lunch with sergio i brought the cats with me but i had a little it's like a little carry-on with them the one that we used to take them i mean when we brought them home but of course they've grown so i'm gonna need another one because they were like really smushed in it and i only had one so we went to the Katisa snack bar, which was my first time there. Um, and there, that's a place on post that they just serve Korean food. Um, Katusa is, are the, it stands for like Korean army something or other. I, I should know this. But they're just the, the Korean army people that work with the U.S. Army. So, it's just called the Katusa Snack Bar. So, uh, but they have like meals, not just snacks. That's what I thought at first. I was like, oh, just snacks, like little things. But no, they have like meals. Um, and it's pretty decent priced. So, we went there because I hadn't been yet. And so, we ate there. And then we walked over to the PX. Bought a few things for the house. Just like two or three things that we needed. Um, then I came home and I was like, hey, I'm going to record a video because it's been a while. And here I am recording a video. 
Um, oh, and I did not sleep last night. Just a random thing. I pulled an all-nighter. Not on purpose, but I was just like studying late. And by the time I finished taking my test, I had to take a test. And by the time I finished, it was like 3.30, almost 4 a.m. And I knew I had to be up early for this vet appointment. And I knew that if I go to sleep now with only like two hours of sleep, three hours of sleep, I probably wasn't going to hear my alarm. And, you know, I was worried that I was just going to sleep through it. And I didn't know what, like consequences are if you miss your appointment so I was like you know what I tried to sleep for about an hour just I was just tossing and tur turning though there was no luck so I was like you know whatever so I just um I just I don't know I just was on my phone for a little bit then that got boring then I just tried sleeping again but that didn't work then soon Serge's alarm went off for work and he just got up showered and stuff and I got up with him I did some stuff around the house, did the dishes, like, early. I just, uh, hung out, got ready super early. And, yeah. But I, I was just saying that because I hadn't pulled, I haven't pulled an all-nighter. Wow, since a long time. Even in school, like, during college, I usually don't pull all-nighters because I'm the kind of person that I don't, like, there's your people that stay up as late as possible until they finish their work. And then they're the people that go to bed when they can and wake up early. And I'm the wake up early person. Like, I'll just, I'll wake up at 4 a.m. if I have to, to keep studying. But if I stay up late, like I said, I won't, I won't wake up at the time that I'm supposed to. So, I hope I'm making sense, but... I'd rather go to bed at a decent time and just wake up earlier than planned than go to bed super late and, you know, not wake up for school the next day. Unless I didn't have school. Then that'd be a little different because I could sleep in a bit. But usually, I really, like, even when I was home in, in Florida and the States, I, I never went to bed later than, like, 12.30 or 1, maybe. It's just how I am. But, um, excuse me. But yeah, I hadn't pulled an all-nighter in a long, long time. So, and it's weird because it's like, I'm, I'm tired, but I'm not tired. Like, my eyes are a little bit tired, but I can keep going. I'm okay. I'm not bad. I'm not cranky. I'm okay. It's just weird. But, uh, yeah. Oh, Panda wants to say hi. Hi, Panda. Hi, people. My sister gave me this, and I still sleep with it. Shout out to my sister. What, what, what? I'm trying to do a hand. <laughs> what, what? Mwah. Hi, Sarah. Yeah. I still sleep with my baby. I have another panda around here, too. Part of my pillow pet. I have a mommy and a daughter pillow pet. Oh, here it is, though, sitting on it. I took the daughter with me to Korea, but I let my sister keep the baby. I mean, the mama. So, yeah, what else, what else, yeah, so, that's my catch up, um, I think that's about it, yeah, I'm done for now, so, thank you guys for listening, I'm glad I can just talk about myself to someone, like a little video diary, I'm sorry, I, I'm still a little, I'm not posting as much as I would like, but, I'm just, I'm always busy with something or something else, so I apologize, I really do. But I haven't forgotten about you, and it hasn't been that long, has it? Well, like, two and a half weeks, three weeks? I don't know. I don't know how long it's been. It hasn't been that long, though. Like, not as long as my first time that I spent, like, two, three months apart from you guys. It hasn't been that bad. So, I'm doing better. I'm doing better. Um, next video, I want to post a video with like the, doing the little couples tag thing. It's like this cute little activity that they, this thing that goes on on YouTube. I don't know. I don't get what the tag means, but anyways, so I want to do that next, hopefully, but that requires 
my significant other, so whenever he has time, uh, we, whoa, someone's playing at my phone. We will record that, and I will upload it. So, that will be fun. Um, unless you guys just enjoy hearing me talk about myself, that's fine too, you know, whatever. So yeah, it's getting a little lengthy again. Uh, 25 minutes, but hey, it's for a good cause. I'm just kidding. But anyways, uh, so yeah. Oh, random, random, random. So we finished New Girl, and we are watching the OC all over again. I've already seen it all, but I'm watching it all over, all over again. I saw it like when it first came out, pretty much. A long time ago, years ago, years, years, years. But now Sergio's never seen it, and now we're watching it. So that's our current addiction. That's what we watch every day. Every night during dinner, before bed. It's fun. It's a good show. If you guys haven't seen it, it's super old. But I'm in love with Seth Cohen, kind of half. You know, I'm married, so I can't really say that, but I am. Because Seth Cohen is so cute. He's the cutest little nerdy guy. If you like nerdy guys, I don't know. He's your guy, if you do. But um, but if you like bad boys, then Ryan Atwood is your guy. So the show has it all. It really has it all. But anyways, so that's it. I will stop talking now, and thank you for watching, whoever watches, and I hope to hear, I mean, sorry, not hear from you guys, see you guys soon, not see you guys, talk to you guys soon, hope to talk to you guys soon, alright, bye guys.